Welcome everybody to Forza Motorsport 7 and today we're taking a look at the 2005 TVR Sagaris. Now this was produced in 2005 and 2006 with its name taken from a Greek named Lightweight Battle Axe which pretty much sums up this car in a lot of ways and uh, yeah it's a, uh, a performance machine in a lot of ways which comes down to the fact it's got a uh, independent double wishbone coil over da uh, gas dampers and sway bars for the front and rear suspension it's got ventilated disc brakes up front and rear it's got aluminium alloy uh, wheels its body is uh, made out of fiberglass and uh, yeah as a result this car only weighs 2,377 pounds which is part of why uh, this is called a Sagaris because it's lightweight and it, the battle axe aspect comes from the fact that it's got ferocious power to go with uh, that uh, performance uh, in terms of uh, how much it weighs so uh, yeah it's got a 4 litre inline 6 engine producing 406 horsepower and 349 pounds feet of torque which is a hell of a lot of power and torque in a car that weighs as little as this does and it's rear wheel drive it's only got a 5 speed uh, manual gearbox so uh, yeah it's not got many gears to really uh, tame that power and uh, yeah it also never came with ABS, traction control, stability control or any of the other kind of uh, electronic uh, gizmos that you'd expect to be on a sports car like this and uh, yeah I like this car a lot it's ludicrously quick it looks bonkers it's got all of these slits and uh, splitters and everything because it was also made for uh, road racing but yeah it as a standard road car it is insane as you can see it's also got sideways exhaust it's got a spoiler it does have a hatch so uh, it's reasonably practical for a car of this type but it's still only a two seater it's not tried to cram in you know two small seats in the back like a lot of uh, cars do and uh, yeah the way you open it as well is really interesting because as you can see under the uh, mirror there there's a grey button and it, yeah you press that and that opens the door but uh, do not ask me how you open this thing because yeah that's something that you uh, actually had to be shown a video of to show you how to uh, start it and uh, get it going but yeah interior wise it's not the best it's, it looks a lot like a, a hand built small produced uh, sports car because well it was so uh, yeah in terms of uh, equipment or uh, luxuries there really isn't much going for you but yeah it's hardly a uh, boring interior it's just not a very well put together one so uh, yeah that is a bit of a downside but this car more than makes up for uh, the interior uh, due to how it uh, drives so let's uh, get out onto a track and see what this car can do right we're at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit for one lap. I'll let you listen to the car for a little bit and then I'll talk some more about it. Yeah, like I said, this is for uh, road racing or track racing or whatever you want to call it. And you can tell that by the bump in the roof there. That's to give you extra room for a helmet if you're going to be wearing one. And uh, yeah, it shows that this is made for you know racing because on a track it is yeah ludic ludicrously quick and yeah really really good in terms of handling. And acceleration is as you'd expect really great considering it weighs very little and it has more than 400 horsepower. 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds, 0 to 100 in 8.1 seconds, and it will go to a top speed of 185 miles an hour, which is really great even by today's standards, never mind 15 years ago. So, uh, yeah, it's got acceleration and top speed 100% down. In terms of handling, it is good, but you have to be well aware of what you are driving and how fast you're going in the corners and the braking that you're doing because. Yeah, this car will kill you if you, uh, for one moment, have a lapse of, uh, you know, attention to it. So, uh, yeah, you have to be on it all the time. Which, yeah, doesn't mean that the name really is a uh, fitting for the car. Because it is lightweight and it is a battle axe and that it is deadly. So, uh, yeah, name fits this car beautifully and it also sounds really good as well. Revving up to nearly 8,000 RPM from an inline-six engine is 
always going to sound good, like that. And uh, yeah, unlike, say, the equivalent kind of Ferrari or McLaren from nowadays or anything like that, this was cheap at the time. And I imagine second hand prices are ludicrously more than they were uh, in terms of the original price. So, uh, yeah, if you're after a uh, lightweight, fast, exciting but also dangerous sports car then uh, yeah you can't do much better than this to be honest and uh, yeah TVR were the king of uh, cars like that uh, which is kind of why it's a shame that for a long time they were away but they are back now with the uh, Griffith but yeah their older cars are where uh, it is in terms of uh, insane performance and insane handling and, and you know just general unruliness in terms of uh, how it behaves in the hands of anyone that's driving it because yeah unless you're uh, like I said continually uh, paying attention to what you're doing in the car it will spin out it will oversteer it will uh, try and kill you and uh, yeah that is part of why uh, TVR were uh, as well loved by a select few so uh, yeah and I kind of like it for that as well even if it's not my uh, favorite of the sports cars from the 2000s nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye